Hi, today I'll present our work on learning signal agnostic implicit manifolds. This is joint work with Katie Collins, Josh Tannenbaum, and Vincent Sitzman. On a day-to-day -day basis, we receive a constant stream of perceptual inputs. Such perceptual inputs include images uh, in, uh, for, as visual input, 3D shapes as, as uh, 3D information, and auditory input. In addition, our perceptual inputs are multimodal in nature. For example, given a video, we, re we receive not only auditory information, but also image information. A, a central problem in machine learning is discovering the underlying structure in such data modalities. We refer to this problem as manifold learning. Existing approaches have explored this extensively for each particular domain. For example, for images, convolutional architectures provide a natural way to discover the structure. However, in this paper, we're interested in constructing an, an domain agnostic model, which can discover the underlying structure across each different signal modality. To do this, we utilize a neural field. A neural field takes as input, uh, input uh, coordinates of a signal and outputs the corresponding values at those coordinates. This gives us a powerful way to represent a variety of different signals. Take, for example, an image here. We can represent an image by mapping each of the pixel values in the image to its corresponding color. Alternatively, we may also represent a spectrogram by mapping the underlying frequency and time step to its corresponding spectrogram intensity. Now consider this more complicated multimodal signal considering, of, considering uh, both images as well as audio. Again, we utilize a neural field to represent both of these one that maps in pixel coordinates to the image, and another one frequencies to the spectrogram. We are interested in discovering the underlying latent manifold in which these signals lie. In particular, we want to find a latent space which maps, uh, which maps the latent to these neural fields. How do, we, how do we obtain such a mapping? In this work, we propose to utilize a hypernetwork, which takes as input the latent and maps it directly to the weights of, of neural field for the image as well as for the spectrogram. To, uh, to learn a manifold which covers the entire data distribution, that is, uh, so that all data points are inside the underlying latent space, we, can, we may utilize an auto decoding objective, where for every single data sample in our training data set, we learn a separate latent and train the, each latent to reconstruct, uh, reconstruct the corresponding image and spectrogram. In addition to data coverage, there are a variety of other things we care about in terms of manifolds, including having uh, local geometric information and having local metric information. We now discuss both of these. First, for isometric learning, we are interested in constructing a manifold so that similar looking things, such as two similar images, should be close to each other in the underlying latent space. To do this, we simply enforce that the L2 distance of the two signals, such as in image space, uh, is proportional to their distance in latent space, only for signals that are close to each other. For, more, for further ones, we do not enforce anything. Next, we want our latent space to be locally metric. That is, given a single point in our latent space, we want to be able to move around in our latent space and get good, uh, good and similar perceptually consistent samples. To do this, we enforce that our manifold is locally linear in nature. That is, given a single latent, uh, latent point, we enforce that it can be reconstructed using the nearby latents to it. This way, this latent space lies in a local linear subspace defined by its neighbors. And in such a manner, we can move around locally around this latent space and get a variety of, sim of consistent samples as they all lie on the surrounding manifold. We've, pr we've provided three losses, which we may add together to, uh, to, uh, to make a manifold over any data modality. By combining each of these, we, we construct our model generative manifold learning, which we, uh, which we call for short GEM. Next, we assess how GEM can enable us first to capture the entire data distribution and then discover the underlying structure in data and finally generate new samples. First, data, data coverage. We take uh, test, uh, test samples and fit our model to them. First, we consider some test images and consider uh, StyleGAN. We find that StyleGAN is able to reconstruct a variety of the images, but is unable to construct some of them 
uh, that are out of distribution. In contrast, our approach is able to reconstruct all of the samples. Next, let's consider 3D shapes. Again, we find that FDN only gets very poor shapes, while our approach gets more consistent looking 3D shapes. We can also try this with audio. If we try, if we use FDN to fit the audio or style again, while our approach obtains a signal nearly the same as the ground truth. We can also try this with audiovisual signals where we have an image of a person playing the cello as well as the corresponding audio. If we try FDN or style again, while well, our approach gets good images and audio. Now let's assess the structure learned by our approach. First, let's consider taking the manifold learned by our approach and seeing if we can hallucinate audio when only given the input image. Let's say I give you, give you this input image. What would be the audio we would expect? Well, in this image, the bow is on the strings, so therefore we would expect some, uh, some type of note. Is one hallucinated audio by our method. It's another one. And this is a third hallucination of audio from our method compared to the ground truth, which is fairly similar. Now let's say we left our bow, so there is no bow on the screen. What sound should we hear? Essentially, we hear nothing. And correspondingly, we find that the ground truth audio is also empty. Now let's say we take our bow, put it on the strings, but put it on the higher string. So we expect higher pitch sounds. And what do we find? And the corresponding ground truth. Overall, we find that our approach is able to capture the structural relationship between input images and the, cor and the corresponding audio. Now let's consider a setting where I only give you the audio snippet and ask you to hallucinate what the possible image can look like. Under, uh, under the first spectrogram, we see that the spectrogram is empty, indicating no bow on the stream, while the next two correspond to a low pitch a sound and a higher pitch sound. We find that one complete, in the first completion, uh, our images have no bow on the cello when the spectrogram is empty, the, string on the, lower, uh, the bow on the lower strings when the pitch is lower, and the bow on higher strings when the pitch is higher. We observe a similar thing in the second setting as well as the third. Notice that the ground truth also closely matches this. Now let's consider in painting. Let's say I give you four images where we mask out parts of the image. Now let's look at our completions. We find that our completions are consistent. For example, the eyes of the, pers uh, the, eyes of the person are correctly constructed as well as the corresponding eyeglasses and mouth. Similarly for this completion and this third completion. Notice how the ground truth looks fairly similar to our completions. We can also walk along the underlying manifold defined by our approach. What we can do is we can take a latent in our manifold and successfully interpolate between different nearest neighbors. And as we can see here, this enables us to walk along the image manifold and have perceptually consistent transitions between different samples. We can further assess the global manifold structure of our approach. We take the latents to, uh, learned from our approach and apply a T-SNE clustering on them. We find that if we color code the uh, T-SNE embeddings with the corresponding pitch for, our, for audio snippets, we find that our approach correctly clusters lower audio pitch sounds to the outside and, more, and higher frequency ones towards the inside. We can also look at the underlying connectivity structure of our approach. If we take two latents of two images shown on the left and we query their nearest latent neighbors without using the two of our proposed manifold losses, we find the nearest neighbors do not look very similar at all to the input image. In contrast, if we add our regularization terms, we find our, the nearest neighbors in our latent space are significantly more similar. Finally, let's talk about generating new samples using our manifold. To generate new samples using our manifold, we simply just walk along our manifold. We first consider 3D shape generations. We find that FDN gets so much uh, poorer generations, while training a latent GAN on top of the implicit decoder of IMNet is also somewhat poor. Finally, our approach looks more diverse and has more shapes. We can also consider audio-visual generations. 
Again, FDN gets some of poor visual uh, generations where the audio spectrogram is empty. Style GAN 2 is better, but the images still have noticeable artifacts, and the sound is also somewhat speckled. In contrast, our approach has good images as well as good audio. In conclusion, we presented a way to learn the underlying manifold of data in a domain agnostic manner. Our approach provides some rich opportunities for future work. On one hand, our structure or discovery relies on utilizing a single global latent to describe each signal. We believe a rich direction for future work is to, is to use locally compositional latents to describe the structure. Similarly, our generations are somewhat poor when compared to the state-of-the-art methods. However, at the same time, our generations pre present an orthogonal way to learn, the, uh, to learn a generative model over a distribution, which we believe have some additional benefits, such as mode coverage. And we believe that further exploration on this direction is a ripe area for future research. Thank you.